sir. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, I stand before you today extremely humbled, a little bit of nervous energy, uh, a lot of things swimming through my head. Uh, but first and foremost, obviously, you don't get the opportunity to be in a room like this, accepting an opportunity like this without a lot of help. And so uh, I'd like to thank some people. Obviously, I've been thanking people uh, privately by text and Twitter and email for the last 48 hours. Um, but first and foremost, General Williams, I, I'm humbled. Uh, thank you for your trust in me uh, to take over this opportunity. I'm thrilled to, to be here. Um, to Corky Messner, the entire search committee uh, that ran an incredibly uh, welcoming search process uh, from start to finish. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity as well. Uh, certainly want to thank Ron Wellman, who was a professional mentor of mine uh, for nearly 15 years. He, uh, he taught me everything I, I know about leadership and leading with humility and integrity and, and, uh, and character. And so he just finished up an incredible 27 year run as the athletic director at Wake Forest University, which happens to be my alma mater as well, um, but would not be here today without Ron's guidance as well. So a big thank you to him. And uh, ironically, the reason that I'm here is I put my faith in 18 to 22 year old young people and the student athletes at Furman University rose to the challenge. Uh, they supported me. Uh, they provided me the drive uh, to do what I did. Uh, but I, obviously, they made me look good, uh, and that's important. So the student athletes, faculty, staff at Furman University, I'm, I'll forever be grateful. Certainly, President Elizabeth Davis, who gave me my first opportunity to lead a Division I college athletics department. I'll be forever grateful to her for that opportunity as well. Uh, and then on the personal standpoint, my parents, my two big brothers, who instilled in me at an early age the importance of the balance between academic excellence, competitive spirit, uh, athletic achievement, uh, that really shaped the foundations uh, for this career path that I've been on. I would not be here without them. Basically, they, they beat the, the tar out of me for the first 10 years of my life and taught me I better better be, better learn how to be competitive or I'm never gonna get the extra brownie at the end of the day. <laughs> And then finally, as, as, as the suit pointed out, my family who has had a, a, a whirlwind of 48 hours, I've been involved in searches before, and none of them uh, ended up at the Pentagon. <laughs> uh, but I'm very blessed that they were able to come along with us, and, and we've been treated uh, phenomenally well by every person that we've come in contact with. So Tracy and I have been married for 23 years. Um, Zach is my 18-year-old. He's just finished his freshman year at Furman University. Uh, and our daughter Zoe is a 15 year old who just wrapped up her ninth grade freshman year of high school. So um, we're, we're soliciting advice on local schools uh, and can't wait to get started. So um, when Todd Turner called me, and, and I appreciate Todd even including me in the pool of candidates, but he called me and said, what do you think about West Point? And I knew what the general public knows, which is unbelievable, uh, honorable institution, the best of the best, uh, leadership surrounded by the best leaders and thinkers in our country. And so I started digging in, and as an athletics director, you also want to know, well, what's the indoor facility look like? And who's on the football schedule? And so I started doing my research and checking boxes, and, and every box of a concern, uh, I was checking quickly. Uh, one of the biggest things for me is I want to be associated with institutes that have great identity, that know who they are. Uh, and I don't think there's, a, there's an academy in the country, or the world for that matter, who understands who we are better than West Point. Um, so by the end of that quick little Google search that I spent a weekend doing, I shifted my thinking from do I want to pursue this job to how in the world am I going to position myself so that they're actually interested in me? Because I'll, I'll state the obvious, I'm not a military guy. I, I did not grow up in a military family. Uh, I cannot imagine. I, I knew when I was 18 I was not tough enough or disciplined enough to represent our country as a soldier. Um, I can never fully understand what it feels like to put yourself in harm's way, to train every day to defend this country, and also train every day to try to be competitive at the Division I level. Fortunately, what I do understand is how to lead a team, how to get consensus and pull everybody in the same way, how to motivate and communicate and inspire young people and coaches to do their best every day within the confines of what is truly important in duty and honor and country. And so I'm very fortunate that I'm surrounded by people who get the military part. My job is, is to win and to do so in a way that will make all of the Army community across the planet extremely proud. 
I feel extremely blessed. Uh, I've never met Duke Oregon, but I've got to admit he has done a phenomenal job. Uh, I'm getting handed the keys to a car that's running extremely well. Uh, and for that, I'm extremely thankful. Um, but I also have a minor league baseball mentality. My, my background is as a baseball player. And I wake up every day with a relentless focus on how can I move the needle a little bit. So as successful as this program has been, I did not, I, I'm not here to coast. I want to continue to elevate our program. So uh, I am thrilled again for this opportunity. I take it extremely seriously. Uh, but I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be a part of this community. And I want to say, beat Navy. Yeah. It's time to take some questions. We have some wireless microphones. Please wait for the microphone to come your way. State your name and media affiliation before your question. Let's start. Justin. Uh, yes, Justin, that is for the Times Herald Record. Uh, Mike, uh, a question for you. I know a lot of people know that you, you pitched for the Yankees back in the day. Uh, you were drafted um, by them as well. Is there anything that you take away from that experience that you think will help you in this position? Uh, yes, thanks, Justin. Um, of course, I mean, getting a chance to play professional baseball for 13 years uh, has shaped who I am as a person. Uh, great leadership lessons. Um, I played for coaches and managers who were phenomenal leaders who, who, who motivated me to, to go out and, and become the best that I can be. And I also had a chance to play for coaches who were the opposite. Uh, and I, those people have a negative impact on student athletes' lives as well. And so at the professional level, I'm getting paid to do it. Um, I'll tell you one of the most valuable lessons that I learned as I transitioned from being a professional baseball player into representing first Wake Forest, then Furman, and certainly now West Point. Uh, a veteran baseball player who had been in, the, I think he was in his 17th season, who was on that 1998 Yankee team, pulled me aside uh, my first week in New York and said, listen, here's something I wish somebody would have told me. Every day when you wake up, pretend that there is a documentary film crew following you around from sun up to sundown. And if there was a decision that you would do differently if that were the case, then, then don't make that decision. Um, every decision that I make reflects on, on the Army community and so, uh, having played under the spotlight of, of the New York Yankees, and, and I need to mention, I, I pitched for the Brewers, too. We were the, <laughs> going from the best team to the worst team. <laughs> um, so yeah, all of those experiences have shaped my, uh, my, my character and, and who I am today. Matt, in the back. <coughs> Uh, Matt McNamara of Spectrum News. Obviously, as you talked about before, this is your second time as an AD in a new school. What were the things from your time at Furman that you learned, maybe mistakes or things you could have done better that you want to apply to Army? Uh, there were no mistakes, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, specific leadership uh, things, um, leading searches. You know, you've got to lead a couple searches uh, on your own. Um, I, I like to say uh, I learned that through my first search at Furman um, that you want to provide people a voice but not necessarily a vote. Uh, and then certainly making time, carving out time for two things in my calendar that I think are extremely important. One is mark out time of the day to exercise. Um, this is a job where you can always justify taking the lunch meeting and, and working until you're, you know, you're, you're gonna burn out. Um, so I like to physically exercise, unplug, um, stay fit, visit our student athletes or cadet athletes during that time. Um, and then I also make sure that I, I block off time every day to, to send 15 to 20 thank you texts. I mean, it's a text message, it's a handwritten note, it's an email. Uh, I've gotten some of these from people who I haven't seen in five, 10 years, but uh, your network and your scope of, of contacts across the country are extremely important in my job when it comes to bowl games and um, you know coaching searches and all those things. So. Uh, that's one of those things that I just kind of learned as I went along that you can't lose touch with people who can put you in a position to help your institution. So those are the two things. Time for one more, Ken. Uh, Ken Kreitzer, uh, American Legion Radio Rally Point and WVOX. Uh, welcome. Uh, you mentioned in, in your bio uh, a number of fundraising successes and uh, both at Wake Forest and Furman. Obviously, that's a key to the game for bringing facilities to a college campus. What, what is it that helps attract fundraising that raise the capital run an athletic program? Great question, Ken. So uh, facilities are the lifeblood. I, I've never believed that buildings win games, um, but when you're recruiting against the best of the best, little things can sometimes make a difference. I don't have a, uh, my fundraising approach is, is create a compelling vision, 
um, and make sure that you communicate that compelling vision to the right people at the right time and, and be completely authentic. I think a lot of times you, you kind of can go into used car salesman mode, um, but, but again, at the core of what we do, we're not, we're not upgrading facilities for me. We're, we're doing it for these young kids. We've got to make sure that they, uh, they have the facilities to stay competitive. We all want to beat Navy. Um, we're doing it very, very well right now. But to keep doing that, we just got to have a continued, continual effort to, to improve. Like I said, just a, a culture of constant improvement is, is like I have, how I refer to it. Not only with people, but also facilities. Thanks. I'm going to go back to Justin for one. And then uh, just for Lieutenant General Williams, uh, is there something that Mike said throughout the interview process that uh, helped you make the decision over all the other candidates that you've had? Yeah, what, uh, what was very clear from the very start from all the candidates, we had a very high list of uh, quality of applicants, but uh, Mike was a standard deviation higher than all of these, clear from the very start. So his, uh, his focus on winning, and then more importantly, winning the right way, the kind of character, as you can see by listening to him talk, it was very clear. And it wasn't just me, it was all the board members who helped me get after this as well. So winning, but winning the right way. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, everyone, for coming out here today on what's a great day for Army West Point Athletics. Congrats and welcome again, Mike and the Buddy family. Looking forward to having you here at West Point. Thanks again for coming out. Go Army, beat Navy. Woo.